Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Barkis Ophthalmology Tutorials. This is also a different video where we are not discussing any of the ophthalmology chapters. I will be discussing how to plan your day in third year MBBS. So before planning something, let's see what regularly happens with a third year MBBS. As far as I know, a day in a third year MBBS student will be like from 8 to 5 they will have to spend in the college. So by 8 o'clock they will have their theory classes usually. So a student will get up by 7 or 7.30 and they will just rush to the class so that they have to be within 8 o'clock in the classroom. God knows how many of them will take bath. Okay. But they want to make sure that they are in the class by 8 o'clock. Even then it will be 5 or 10 minutes late. So the teachers will scold. All those things will happen. Somehow they will enter into the class at 8 o'clock and they will attend 8 to 9 theory class. Then from 9 to 5 we will just go off in the college. So what after 5 o'clock till the any student sees the last professor of the class they will be thinking like I should go to the room and study completely without wasting a minute today. So that is the determination I should have so I will do that. So that strong mind they will have till they see the professor in the classroom. Once they go out of the classroom that is after 5 o'clock and they meet their friends everything will change. They will start chatting or a cup of coffee relaxation. So by the time they enter the room, it will be at least 6 o'clock. So once they come to the room, they see their dirty bed. So they think that I should clean my bed. It's not exactly cleaning. They will just put all the clothes and the material what's there on the bed to the study chair. Okay. And they will just relax. And by the time the relaxation is over, it's already 7 or 7.15. So they think that, okay, now we will start studying without wasting any time. And they open their book. Before even they complete one paragraph or one page, some of his friend enter into the room. It's not with a bad intention. They may be wanting some help or they want to ask something. For that reason, they enter the room, but it will not end there. Again, one more conversation begins there. Where the conversation will go from the intention of entering to the room, to the friends, to the girls in the college, or the boys in the college, teachers, sports, library. It will take a big round of discussion about the everything. By the time it gets over, it will be dinner time, that is 8.30. If you don't go to the hostel at right time, dinner will not be served. So, we will go to the dinner. You will have dinner and if you have a nice campus like ours, you will have a cool walk in the night. By the time you complete your walk and the dinner and come back to the room, it's already 9.30 or 9.45. Then you will suddenly remember that some strict professor had given you some homework, which you have not done. So, you will search for the answer and start writing the homework or if there is any pending uh, record you will complete that then it will be 10 10 45 you will go to the bed so this is what happens routinely with every student if the day is not planned properly relate to the routine i told just now please do leave your comments in the comment section so let's see how you should plan your day in the mbbs so first one should know what is the goal of studying the mbbs you should understand the subject right so that you can treat your patient effectively, right? The second is, you should clear your theory exams. And third is, clear your practicals, right? I always give more weightage for the first intention or the goal. Though you get just passing marks in your practicals or the theory, you should not be feeling guilty or you should not feel bad but if you are very good at understanding the subject and treating your patient, that's more than enough. Even if you get just 50 marks in theory and 50 marks in, or 50% in the practicals, that's more than enough. Okay. So how many times and how often you should study, that varies with the individual. But I will just give tips to use the hours effectively in a day. Okay. Since you are spending most of your time in your college, so 9 hours are spent in the college, right? So make maximum utilization of those 9 hours. Means in your theory classes, be attentive and listen to your professor. Your professor is a huge source of information. Whatever he tells is like doing notes out of any textbook. And you should concentrate which points your professor is stressing on. And he will be telling, this can be your main question, if this is very important part of this chapter, like that. So catch those points and learn there. So if you do that, you are almost done with at least 30 to 50% of the topic which is covered in the theory class. 
okay hardly you have two hours of theory class i think everyone can concentrate if they had good sleep the day before right some students may not like the classes from some lectures it happens in those classes don't disturb the class don't disturb your teacher just take out one paper and pen and revise what you had studied yesterday so that will account to the revision also and you are not disturbing your class also and you are getting your attendance also so you are making maximum utilization of your theory class there then comes your clinical postings right so if you are on time by 9 o'clock in the clinics you will be having at least 30 minutes of time which you can use for studies because no case will be ready by 9 o'clock none of the professor will just come at 9 o'clock and start teaching you so you have solid 30 minutes of time to revise the theory part which is related to the cases like the cataract chapter you can complete in the clinical postings only okay all those um, all those theory classes related to the practical cases like cataract or the pseudophakia fakia Cornell ulcer, those things you can study in the clinical postings and finish it off there. And afternoon you have your integrated learning, which is a great opportunity to remember the things. So you should make maximum efforts to utilize these nine hours in the college. Give the master timetable at the end. So now we will discuss what is the strategy for studying. So if you want to study something, first close your eyes and think about the topic. Suppose you want to study about the cataract. Just close your eyes, relax and think about the cataract. You might have heard the cataract from your parents or the neighbors. So go on putting the questions. So what is the cataract? Where it can happen? Which structure of the eye can get affected? What are all the causes for this cataract to form? Can it be treated? How the patient will present? So go on putting n number of questions in your mind about that particular topic. Then open your book and give your first reading. Okay. First reading should be like reading a novel. You should just relax and read the book. Then you will be surprised to see the answers for all the questions which had come to your mind. So that you will appreciate those answers. Without having framed the question, if you had read that, you wouldn't have appreciated the answers, right? So the first reading is like reading a novel. Relax. There is no need to remember anything. It is just to understand the things. Then the second reading comes within 24 to 48 hours. Now, Again, you will be just revising what you had read, but give more stress in understanding the subject in depth. Okay, why it happens? What is the connection? So go in that way and understand the subject in depth. Then comes your third reading, which you should give at least two to three weeks after the second reading. Now you should mark which is for your exams. Okay, which is the main question which is the short note, which is the short answer questions, okay, which is the viva voce question, which is the important point clinically. Those things you have to stress and mark in the book or make the notes or whatever, your way of remembering. So that is in the third reading. Come to the fourth reading. Minimum you have to study these many times. So when you start with the fourth reading, you see that at least 70% of the subject or the topic you can easily remember. Okay, you can just tell without opening the book by the time you give fourth reading. But there is some 20 to 30 percent of the topic which will not be reproduced by you. Like it, like it can be the statistical things or the numbers or it can be some theories or it can be some uh, triad. So those things you will not be able to remember. Then take one small book. Okay. Enter this 20 to 30 percent of the thing into that book. Like the numericals like the anteroposterior diameter of the eyeball, the anterior chamber depth, all those things are the triads like triad of retinitis pigmentosa, triad of congenital glaucoma. It could be like that or even the syndromic associations and sometimes some topics though they are very easy you will be confused. So those topics you just enter in this book and keep revising this book often and it is must to revise this book the day before you go to your final exams or your internal assessments. So this is the strategy for your study. So you may ask, should we do all this? Should we study so many times? Yes, you should do. This much of dedication one should have in studies to get that level of satisfaction where you feel very happy. You should get addicted to studies. The moment you study and acquire some new knowledge, you should always feel happy. It should be like 
the endorphins should release in your body once you start studying. You should get addicted to studies to such a level. So the secret for a successful day is always to make a timetable the day before. Means you take a small notebook and write each minute what you are planning to do. You may or may not do it successfully but have a plan so that the next day will go smoothly and at the end of the day when you see the notebook and tick what you had done if the 80% of the things are done then also you will have the highest level of satisfaction and you feel good and your day is utilized to maximum extent. So the timetable for the third year student will be like so first you should know whether you prefer to study in the morning or the night. So this timetable is for those who prefer to study in the night because most of the students will prefer to study in the night. So they will get up by 7 o'clock in the morning between 7 to 8 am they will complete their morning routine have the breakfast properly and come to the class. From 9 to 10 that is in the clinical postings they can utilize at least 30 minutes to 1 hour to study some of the theory topics which they want or the, uh, or the theory aspect of the practical cases they can study in the clinical postings. So once you finish your college time, by 5 you will be completing your classes. So between 5 to 5.45 or 6 p.m. have snacks. If you want to see mobile, do that. Or you can have a good nap. Or you can use this time to play or do some exercise. Okay. From 6 to 8.15 should be dedicated for the studies. The best place to study is library. I always prefer to study in library. Though initially you may not get interest in uh, studying in library, but once you start studying, you will just be lost in the studies. Okay, so the best, uh, so the best place to study is library. So between six to eight fifteen p.m., divide the time. Every forty-five minutes, you dedicate for one subject. Like from six to six forty-five p.m., it's one subject EAT. Next forty-five minutes for ophthalmology. Next forty-five minutes for community medicine. Then from eight fifteen to nine p.m. Have dinner if you want to call your parents. You can use this time to make phone calls. Then again start your studies from 9 to 11.30. Okay. Here at this time libraries may or may not be open all the days. If library is open good enough. Otherwise in the hostel only search for some place where there is no disturbance. Never ever sit in your room and study. Okay. So by 9 to 9.45 p.m. You can take one more subject of your third year that is forensic medicine now. From 9.45 to 10.30 p.m. Do the homeworks or the assignments given by some professors or you can complete the record or you can do some pending work in this period of 9.45 to 10.30 p.m. From 10.30 to 11.30 utilize this time for your final year subjects which are also dating third year. Okay. So dedicate this one hour for final year subjects. So this is how you should plan your day in third year MBBS. So in each day's timetable in this 45 minutes, you should write which specific topic of ENT you want to study, which specific topic of the ophthalmology you want to study and make a timetable so that it is easy to implement it in the very next day. So to conclude, it is not whole one year what you have for third year. It is just six months what practically you have in your hand to study third year MBBS. Adding to that, it is not three short subject. One more subject is added that is forensic medicine. Also, you have final year subjects which will be going on in your third year. So, the time is very less. Make maximum utilization of the time you have and study well to succeed. Happy Ganesha Chaturthi to everyone. I am all Ganesha Abba Shubha Shegadu. Avigna Vinashaka Ganapati, you are all the best. Avigna Vinashaka Ganapati, you are all the best. Avigna Vinashaka Ganapati, you are all the best. Thank you so much.